Welcome back to Let's Play Heroes Chronicles. I am your host, Board Gamer Girl, and we are about to start the Dragons of Rust scenario of the Clash of, Dra of the Dragons campaign. Tarnum must defeat all of the dungeon overlords in the area without dying himself. All heroes will be limited to level 24, but Tarnum and two of his best captains will transfer over to the next scenario. So we have a small map. Our enemies go first again. We're going to put this up to expert difficulty. Knowledge or spell power. In theory, this next one will also give us this choice. But even if it doesn't, I think I want the knowledge, just because more spell points means more stuff I can do. While Tarnum freed the good dragons from the Dragon Queen's control, Mutari lured the savage Rust dragons to her side. Soon they flew at the front of her army, destroying anything that got in their way. I mean, Rust dragons are annoying, but they're not as annoying as other dragons that that we can find. While I was freeing the good dragons from Mutari's control, the Dragon Queen lured the Rust Dragons to her side. At one time, these wild and unpredictable beasts were believed to be a myth because no one ever survived an encounter with them. Even the good dragons thought they had all died off, but somehow Mutari found them. I have heard some of the stories, and if the Rust Dragons fight for Mutari, now she has already tipped the balance of power in the world. Even worse, the loss of the good dragons has attracted her attention to my actions. Somehow, she knows my name, and she knows my mission. Aspen says this is further evidence that a spy is in our midst, but I say one of the good dragons could have told her while under the Dragon Queen's control. I hope so, because I just I don't want to lose her. Yeah, look at that. Those are insane stats. Those are also... He also... Yagor also has really good stats. They all have good stats. You all have such great stats. It makes me very happy. Alright, so you're here, you're here, and you're up there. What, what are these? These are... Oh, well that's solid. They're already sort of claimed for me. And... There's no underground, so... You are going to view Earth and look at my little map. Alright, so we're going to have to go around. That's fine. You're going to view air. You're just all the way over there. Fantastic. Alright. But you're not actually producing any of this nonsense. All right, turn them. Why not? We'll give you some cannon fodder, too. Just to be on the safe side while she comes back and collects some stuff. Darn em. Several red dragons, huh? Several red dragons are tormenting the young green dragons within the dragon caves, blasting huge gouts of flame into the caverns as they fly about. The young ones trapped within are inca incapable of freeing themselves until you kill the red dragons. God, really? That was not necessary. I don't think you're broad enough to actually get both of them. No, you're not. Oh, right, you're immune to spells.
Oh, you killed it. Damn it. That was actually not what I wanted to do. Crap. Oh, well. We'll just deal with it. I have some experience. Citadel me, please. One of the dungeon overlords is entrenched on the border of Aveline, preparation for Matari's invasion. Aspen has informed me that this overlord has rust dragons at his disposal. At his disposal. So I guess I'm going to get a chance to meet these mysterious creatures after all. But I must act quickly and defeat the enemy that lurks beyond the border before he builds a force that could threaten Avli. Oof. That cost me a lot of money. So we're going to actually take some money. And we're going to work on beating the crap out of these people too. Hello, Valida. I don't really know what else to do with you other than have you just sit here for the moment. Go for experience? Why not? The grass suddenly catches fire all around you, kicking up huge plumes of smoke. When it clears, you face a group of magogs ready to attack. Really? Really? I can't, I can't make you go faster. It's brutal. Well, that's fine. You can totally take on those guys. All you want. Excellent. Let's see what you've got for me. More gold, please. Ooh. Several black dragons. That's not exciting at all, actually. Hmm. Castle, yes, thank you for a castle. Oh yes, I'm quite sure. Yuck, 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 yuck. You catch a foul order. Oh, <clears throat> excuse me. You catch a foul odor in the air that nearly makes you ga gag. Run, eggs, says the soldier next to you. No, you say not quite. Something else. You move cautiously forward. Parting the trees, you see a pair of massive reddish-brown dragons, larger than any of you have ever seen. They lounge before the dragon caves. You notice deep scars in the stone around the caves, and all that plant life in the area is dead. Then one of the dragons comes to its feet and spits a steam of reeking acid at the rock. Now you know the source of that smell. Rust dragons, you tell the soldier next to you. Yeah, these guys are kind of awful. They are, like, sincerely awful. Here's the question. How much damage are you going to do? 70 points of damage? Goodness gracious. You have like a bajillion health.
Thank you for killing them. Alright, so now we want to resurrect these guys. And we're gonna wait another turn. Alright. So we're gonna have you wait. We're gonna have you blast the crap out of them. Almost, almost. That's fine. Kill all those guys. I want my... Oh, my sharpshooters won't be alive. That sucks. Well, I at least want my dragon alive. My dragon will be alive. That's fine. Whew. These things are costly as all get out. I'm getting my dragon army up here. Okay. Well, they're stronger than me because they have stupid rust dragons, but I own them in all of our skills, so I think we're okay. And I think we're basically fine. Captain Melita has been riding next to me for five days now, and she's never said more than three words to me at any time. I've tried to strike up a conversation on a few occasions, but she seems uncomfortable talking to me. Or is it talking in general? Today I discreetly asked if any of the elves in my ranks knew Valita. Unfortunately, no one could help me. <clears throat> I mean, it seems a little insane that, like, there would be issues, given that she's basically... been someone that, like, all these places know. That's just my opinion, though. Alright, so let's just slow them down. And then kill them all. So what do you want? You want 10,000 gold? Wait, I'm sorry. 10,000 gold? Are you kidding me? That is an insane amount of gold, people. Well, it's enough for me to get a capital, so that's my issue. Several black dragons. Ugh, God. They're not as bad, but they're still pretty bad. If I do that, then I'll have to wait. You know what, we're just, we're, we're gonna, you're gonna have to wait. I'm sorry. Aspen was sipping tea, minding his own business as I walked by. I thought I was going to be able to avoid a conversation with the elderly spy, but I was wrong. I see you've developed an interest in our fair Captain Valida, Aspen said. I looked around to see if anyone else was close enough to hear, but I shouldn't have bothered. Aspen always had a way of talking when no one else could possibly hear. Have you finally realized that I am always right, Aspen asked with his usual cocky grin? No. The only thing I've realized is I wish I had a wise advisor, and not an arrogant one. Aspen laughed, despite the insult. It's not arrogance, my friend. It's confidence. You have the same confidence in your battle skills. You have been victorious so many times that I had wagered the thought of losing doesn't even enter your head. While well, I have been right so many times that I have stopped considering the possibility that I might be wrong. I rolled my eyes and immediately removed myself from my advisor's presence. But later, I thought about Aspen's words. There was a time when I did consider myself incapable of losing a battle. In the end, I was wrong but it took a sword in the gut to teach me that lesson. And even now I realize that I hadn't considered the possibility that I might lose my fight against Mutari. If she gains control of all the world's dragons, how could I possibly win? Uh, by being awesome? Yes. We do want to engage you, apparently. What do you need? Shortly after you knock on the gate to this tower, the door flies open and a middle-aged cleric steps out with his hands clenched at his side. What? Don't you have better things to do than knock on my door all day? The cleric shouts. Sorry, you say. I was just hoping to pass through. Oh, oh, you want to pass? Like I don't have a tower here for a reason? 
Maybe I like sitting in this tower all day, letting just anybody through for no reason than they want to. I couldn't be guarding this pass. No, what do I look like? Well, not a kindly priest, but a priest nonetheless. Funny man! Hey, are you a comedian? You take a deep breath, fighting down your own anger, and ask, What are you so mad at? I lost something. Is that alright with you, Mr. Stick His Nose in My Business? I've been tearing the place apart, and I just can't find it. Unless you can help, go away. Cleric slams the door in your face, leaving you confused and angry all at once. Alright, well, I guess we'll go back and get it. Okay. I would almost say that I have enough to deal with this, but I don't want to push my luck. So we'll just we'll just run around here, I guess. All right, buying ourselves the capital. Those stupid rust dragons are killing me here. So I can't haste you, which is really irritating, but I can do that and try and, I don't know, convince you to not... I want my sharpshooter back. Back, I say. There we go. No. Alright, advanced air magic it is. I'm not convinced that I really want any of this other stuff. A horde of harpies and harpy hags have gathered at the water's edge. Some are fishing the dark water. Others are tearing up flowers from nearby flower beds. Their beauty offending them. You see a pendant around the neck of one of the hags and realize it must be magical. Do you want to tear it? Yes, I want to try and take the pendant away from them. Nice. Yay, we took the penny of his passion. Oh, hello, Scorpacores. Okay then. No, we're saving up our money. Plus we have most of those spells that we want, so... Let's be realistic. Realistically, I'm not going to get all the levels I want, so we're just going to take it and take our expert air magic. Fantastic. And then we're going to run back here and see what you want. And we'll try and get you some stuff. Can't pay you, huh? Take it. Uh, we'll go for basic water magic. Why not? That'll make prayer more useful if we ever get it upgraded. I mean, we have a lot of magic, but there's really no way to avoid that with this nonsense. Okay. What are you giving me? There. I don't want it. <laughs> I'm like... I tell you right now, I do not want it. What I want is my money. That's what I want.
guess. I mean, they might come running back at me, but what else can I do? Um, alright, well. Oh, you know what? You can totally get dragons for us. That's what you can do. And if they do decide to sail some sort of boat at us, which would be really obnoxious, well, we'll just deal with that. Actually, you'll want to take on this horn demon because I'm pretty sure that now you can take them on. How much life do you guys have? You have 120? There we go. Look at how dead you are. We will take on the black dragons. We will sit here. When we stopped at midday to water the horses, I took the opportunity to stretch my muscles and run around the camp. To my surprise, as I ran past the supply wagons, I saw Captain Valida talking to my master of supplies, Kerbon. They seemed friendly toward each other, although Valida still took the short end of the conversation. I don't think I've ever heard a word come out of Kerbon's mouth that wasn't a complaint, so it was equally startling to see the dwarf calm, even joking with the woman. <sighs> Several black darons are perched, blah blah blah. Oh! Ah, okay. Whatever. Anyway. We will resurrect, uh... I'll resurrect our structures, I guess. How much health do you have left? Hmm. Kill them! Yay, okay, so we lost some of those guys, but we're getting a whole extra green dragon in, uh, in exchange. And the, everything to get the bow of the sharpshooter, which basically While adjacent to an enemy creature, which is pretty darn sweet. Alright, now let's run back up here and see if we can slaughter these people. Alright, 
Well, I guess we'll have you defend the realm, and then we'll have you come over here. The door to the tower opens so quickly it nearly rips off its hinges. The cleric looks at you, rolls his eyes skyward. Spare me this idiot, will you? He screams towards the heavens. You dangle the pendant of dispassion in front of his face, grinning. If there was ever a man in the world that needed it, it was this cleric. Is this yours, you ask? Do you give him the pendant? Yes. This tower is manned by the loyal forces of Avli. As you approach, they watch you carefully, yet greet you kindly. I see you fly the Elf King's green flag. You may pass if you want, but you better be sure you're ready to take on the forces of the enemy beyond. I hear talk of rust dragons in these parts. Although I'm not sure I believe them. Anyway, whatever you... Whenever you are ready, you may pass. Are you sure you want to pass into the enemy lands now? I think so. I mean... Yeah, whatever. Why am I not going to pass into their enemy lands? Like, I could sit around on my thumbs, but it's not going to really do me any good. You wanted to see me, Kerbon said. It was the end of a long day, and the dwarf appeared tired. Have a seat, I said. This won't be long. I should hope not. I still have a few things to do before I retire. I don't have the luxury of lounging about and doing nothing all day. No, just a quick question. I was wondering what you could tell me about Captain Vlia. Do you know her well? The dwarf's expression turned suspicious. Why? She's one of my captains, and she talks very little. I'm curious. I like to know the people I command, I said. You don't come around asking about me, Kerbon said. He had me there. Besides, Kerbon continued, she's a good ranger. One of the best. That's all you should care about. Yes, I said. This hadn't gone as I expected, so I ended it. One thing was for sure, though. Kerbon did know Valida, or I wouldn't have seen his protective side. So, what was this loyalty he felt toward the elven woman? Kill them. Thank you. So first layer. Oh, that leads to the rust dragons, doesn't it? All right. So I'm gonna need ten gems. Oh, I can only get to nine? Are you kidding me with this nonsense? That is lame! Yeah, I know. Alright. We're gonna pick up the extra uh, ammo. And, uh, yeah. Alright. Whew! Uh, expert archery sounds like a plan. Okay, so we're in this really interesting position where uh, I'm basically hosed, but I did it once, and so I'm going <laughs> to do it again until I get it right. So, they kill my sharpshooters. These guys attack me. Excellent. Now we're going to resurrect our sharpshooters. Because priority number one is to kill these stupid... I just... I just... I don't want you to kill any of my guys. See, that's a problem. I can't have you killing my guys.
really? You did it again to them? Alright. Well, we've had some stuff going for us, which is nice, but we've also had a lot of stuff not go for us. We're going to get to go first, which is pretty awesome. I don't have anti-magic. No. Oh, I do, but it's... We're gonna try that. I don't know if that actually made sense, but we're giving it a shot. What can I say? Did you just move away from... Yes! Yes, he fled! Oh, thank God! Okay. Lord Almighty, he fled. Thank God. This is a really interesting situation, though, because, like, we're, like, totally hosed. Totally, utterly, completely hosed. We have no spell points. We need to run the hell away. Alright, you are going to come running over here, because you have spell points. And then turn them, you're going to run that way. And we're just going to hope. We're going to hope that we don't get killed. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Give him all of your crap. Yeah, give him the sharpshooters, too. Why not? Turn him. Run the hell away. Run away. You. For the love of all that is good and holy, just kill these people. <laughs> like, please just kill them. Sure. Negate all morale bonuses. All right. Okay. You anti-magicked him, huh? It's really irritating, actually. Well... You have resurrection. Amazingly enough, look at that. We're resurrecting ourselves. this. We're resurrecting ourselves again. Because now I have someone with spell points. Thank God. Red has been vanquished. Oh, thank God. Congratulations on your enemies have been defeated. Victory is yours. You have no idea how long this has taken me. Ugh, how many times I've died. I, it was like 20 minutes. 20 minutes of me dying. 20 minutes of me just being like, oh. I mean, the main problem is like I just didn't have enough spell points. If I'd had more spell points, it would have been fine. But I just was an idiot. And was gung ho. But it can be done. It can be done if the computer just does not completely hose you constantly. Which, I mean, technically I should have lost. They should have just, I mean, they shouldn't bother with anti magic. They should just freaking meteor shower me to death constantly. But, um, 
Anyway, we're going to call it here for today. So, uh, thanks everyone for watching. This is Board Gamer Girls, and have a great day. See ya!